All right, so I'm going to be talking to you guys about uh, dynamic overlays, and it's a sort of new concept with uh, Android O, uh, the new operating system that's coming out next uh, week or two. And um, it's directly correlated to the theming in Android because um, you know theming in Android, such as like Samsung or HTC or LG, actually uses overlays, and like many people don't really realize that, but. Um, like, uh, that's how they get their new resources, their colors are new styles. So my name is Nicholas, um, I'm a software developer in project development, and uh, we have partners such as people like Steven, which is working in uh, XDA developers. Um, and I'm also a University of Toronto student, so I'm like 21. <laughs> Uh, so what is theming? So theming, many people think it's just um, changing styles, you know, making it light or dark. Um, but it's not that simple because um, you know that's that's like in our sandbox we, we like controlling like what theme we're using on our app. So you know, dark mode or light mode or reading mode, whatever. But you know, there's lots of interpretations for um, theming, such as um, you know, these are themes, right? Like you can see it's a app compat light theme, and it's a simple theme that's just created by Android Studio. But uh, these are also themes, like we see many um, home screen designs like with different widgets, different like custom live wallpapers, like icon packs, like everyone has like, you know, a launcher with like a custom icon pack, right? Um, but these aren't really overly theming because um, they're not really theming your whole phone. Your whole phone, meaning that when you open your dialer, you know, you don't want to expect to see like a blank white on your Samsung device, you know? These are the themes I'm talking about. So as you can see here, like these are actually overlaying the theme, uh, sorry, the settings apps inside Android OST. And uh, you can see different designs like uh, buttons, you know, category headers, um, you know, colors, icons for um, you know each of the settings, settings headers, and also you know uh, different colored backgrounds. Or you can keep it simple and just keep um, color accent for your you know settings icons. So all of these require something called overlay packages. As you can see there, even Google Plus is themed, you know, Hangouts is themed, um, there's a desktop app that's themed, and even like system UI, so you get like different kinds of toggles. So how do you theme an Android? Um, theming on Android requires um, one thing, it's called res runtime resource overlay, but recently there was a new evolutionized version called Overlay Manager Service, both distributed by Sony Mobile. And uh, there are many like companies that actually already utilize this, like CyanogenMod, Samsung, LG, or HTC. So as you see, like those um, these companies obviously are not just working, you know, runtime resource overlay from AOSP. They're just modifying it. So you know there are different kinds of like versions, such as like you don't have to have like APKs installed on your device to use an overlay. But why am I talking about this? Is because overlay management service is something new. It's coming out in two weeks. And it's actually confirmed with um, a couple of you know Google employees that I will go into later. So this comes to where I my my team works. Um, we created something called the Stratum Theme Engine, and um, we have five hundred thousand monthly active users on Firebase. Um, what this whole system is is that it allows the user to advance, like to to allow them to uh, create their own overlays to be used on their device. So you can create your own theme, your own style of your, your whole framework, your whole system. So as you see there, um, the toggles on the top right actually change after the configuration has been changed. And uh, the reason why we wanted to do this was because we wanted to support multiple kinds of theming platforms, such as like RO, OMS, and Samsung RO. So RO being Runtime Resource Overlay, and OMS being Overlay Managed Service. So we actually support many of these devices, but some of them require root because um, you know some of them actually put on some security mode, uh, security fixes so that not anyone can just install them. So what's going on? I said early, like um, why 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 did it, um, why am I focusing on overlays? Because um, recently we actually hit up um, you know okay actually. We, we flashed uh, Android O developer previews, and uh, we actually noticed something different inside the framework. And they actually include something called the Overlay Manager Service. If you actually in, uh, you know, start up uh, AB Shell and you, you send like CMD overlay, you actually get the whole list of whatever you need to do for OMS. So actually here, right, um, you can actually see that we, we're actually talking to a system UI software engineer. Um, and he actually confirmed that uh, dynamic overlays is coming in Android O. So 
um, you know, there might be a certain interest in like these overlay APKs so that you can actually, um, you know, theme your device manually. So technicalities behind overlays and how they work. So this is actually a more complex graph than it actually is, but you know, to simplify it down, um, every app, you know, mostly call like app get dot draw, sorry, get drawable, r dot drawable dot whatever. Then the framework that actually handles everything, which is the system, um, actually calls for that get resource, that resource pointer for that object, and then it sends it to the asset manager, which detects it to be a 0x7f, which is a non-framework system file, and it checks if there is an overlay.apk applied on the device. So this is a more illustrated uh, uh, illustration, uh, where the green ANDY is actually replaced by the yellow checkerboard one, and the blue ANDY is actually replaced with the uh, purple, you know, striped one. So when it actually, when, when the app calls green ANDY, it would actually return the yellow checkerboard one, and then it will go back to the complete instance, which called get drawable, and you'll see on your app that it would return a checkerboard ANDY. So this is actually, uh, this is a dynamic way of showing you how the overlay manager service works. So I, I show here that I enable two different overlays, which is one is framework and one of them is the settings overlay. So you can see that the, the action bar actually didn't have any readable text until you enabled the settings. And it's all on Android O, so it's not going to be like something you need like a custom ROM for. And uh, to list overlays and on your device, all you got to do is just DMD overlay list and you can see the states on the left and the package name on the right. So we also created this 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 um, you know this feature directly into our app, which allows to um, allows users to slip like to simulate what the shell commands did earlier, which um, you know disabled overlays, disabled oh sorry, enabled the framework overlay and enabled the settings overlay, and I kind of slowed down the diff so that you can see that each of these um, overlays are being applied right now. So you can see the framework applied and then the settings applied, and now it's just the default theme. So priority, uh, okay. so um, there's also another segment for o overlays, which is uh, priori prioritizing overlays over others. So why do we need priorities? Well, what if you're targeting multiple applications, such as um, you know system UI? What if you have like multiple overlays that that um, you know had two different navigation bars? You know, as you can see here, the runtime resource overlay version has a red part, which is a static variable. 32 priority, but for OMS you have a dynamic way so you can bind directly to the OMS um, service or you can do it from the shell. So, you know, that's where the dynamic overlay came from. And you can see here that like we start off with blocky kinds of navigation bars and we allow the user to, you know, drag and drop and change the UI so you can see the, di the different navigation bars are still enabled, but, you know, it's different from uh, being shown on the system UI. And um, one of the most important parts is that what can you do with an overlay? Well, you can replace any application's assets and resources without any elevated root or permissions just by using an overlay, uh, yeah, overlay package being installed. So as I said there, you can't really um, modify the layouts without uh, you know, non-support dependency. So like, let's say if you're modifying a system UI um, uh, class, like some of them are dependent on the class being present while compiled. So if they require those dependencies, they will fail. But the only safe side is that you cannot compile, uh, sorry, you can't replace any of the compiled code, so like no Java, no Kotlin, no binaries, so like if you, if you like JNIs and, and all that stuff. Um, I would like to stress out here that if you're even thinking about putting any sensitive like files into your assets folder or your res raw folder, you should stop doing that right now. Because uh, you know you can just hook on, you can take the context of any application, and you can just like you know take those resources out and use them in your application. So you can just basically hijack them. But with overlays, it's just it makes them more aware, so you actually understand what's going on. And finally, how do I create an overlay? Well, it's really simple. All you gotta do is just have those. Remember those two things. You have one overlay line, so overlay manifest line that targets a package name. Um, if you're doing an RRO uh, overlay, all you got to do is add the uh, priority there. But uh, with Android O and onwards, we don't use priority. 
and we have to have has code equals false because in the package manager it actually enforces code installs when you install an overlay. And if you if you had some code available inside the overlay, it would reject the install. So you know it's a security you know uh, thing. And that's it. All you gotta do is just create an application, and um, you know the same structure as your target application. So res values, res probable, you know. Res, XML, or whatever. So you just replace all those files and you know push them onto your device and enable, and everything will change. So does this make does this mean your app is unsafe? As I said earlier, um, no, not essentially, because if you're creating an application with your assets without any sensitive files or data, that's fine. All you gotta worry about is um, you know if your layouts are. If your layouts are more complex, you may not be able to overlay them, but you cannot replace any compiled codes like Java, so you can't make your TD app go to like the RBC, right? And um, how can I prevent a resource from being replaced? So let's say you have you, you run TD or like, you, you make like an app that you know you have your signature blue color, your Twitter blue. How do you replace? Uh, make sure that it's blue forever. You just hard code them in Java, you know, set color and into a hex color. And what if you're making an engine after you're watching this presentation? Um, I mean, let's say you wanted to uh, keep your, set, your, your, your theme engine into your device uh, just for yourself, like for your, for your own company, or you know, like let's say if you're Samsung, how, how would you guard against this? Well, obviously you can do the protected, protected permissions, so um, if you don't have a permission, you don't get to run these commands, or you could do a signature level check so that um, only system level, uh, uh, sorry, system signed applications can run back end code. What should I look out for to not modify? So obviously you can see here that the Google app actually, um, you can't read anything, right? Because you don't have control over Google's app. So you should not modify apps you don't have control over. And um, you should never modify notification background colors because that's also something you don't have control over. And finally, compile a device or pre-built overlays. So this is an ongoing thing between like companies, you know, Samsung, HTC, um, you know, CyanogenMod as well. And Kapalan device is really good because you put themes on Play Store. Um, but with, but yeah. um, but the thing is, with compiling on device, you're going to have to have an architecture-based Android assets packaging tool placed into your sandbox of your app. So you're going to um, take more time to compile, sign, and zip align APKs, and then installing them on your device. Or you can go to like you know Samsung's way of doing pre-built overlays, but they don't they don't put any of the themes on the store on Play Store because um, Play Store actually has an act where you cannot put any assets as APKs or install them manually after a first application is installed, or else they'll be yanked out. So yeah, um, any questions? It's a step forward. Like um, we always heard from Diane Hackborn, one of the Google employees, that said that we're not going to have theming on Android. But it's one of the things where OEMs or like maybe you know users or you know companies can actually leave like use use so that you could you know change the look of your app or like you know if you have like an add-on or something. All you got to do is um, you know send that to Play Store, you know, make it as a paid thing, and then like apply it onto your device, so you have like a more enriched, different experience. So it's like a step for like theming, but it's not really like because you can it's, you can completely replace the assets folder, which is like a complete you know experience to replace for. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go on. Uh, so Omar talked earlier. You said that I can replace assets from another app like by obtaining this content. Yes. So, is that the vulnerability, or is, is that something that Android wanted to expose? This is already in Android for so long, um, many years. You can just take the context of any application and then uh, get the context to return a, a resource pointer to a drawable, and then you can just take that out of the um, you know the code and then like output it to a file if you wanted to like take some you know other apps you know drawables or um, specific files or strings or like you know. Anything from the resource folder. So I guess it's just been there. Yes, yeah, it's been there. It's not really a security vuln like vulnerability, but there's obviously ways you can like guard against this, which is just toss everything into the cloud, right? Any other questions? So yep. you were
were targeting like com system UI, does how do you know what the names of the assets are that you need to replace? Okay, so um, there there are other you can, you can obviously use like decompilers, so um, like APK tool, like breaking down the APK and then you can see each resource like what they're named. Um, you know, let's say if if like this currently system UI, like obviously it's you know AOS so you can obviously see it from the source, but um, I'll just you know I see nav home dot XML and it's like a vector drawable. You can put it into your overlays um, by just doing the res slash drawable and then just put your overlay file inside. So like a completely different like icon design and then install it into your device and you know that's how we theme per se. But there's no guarantee that in like the next version of Android they haven't renamed those assets and you'd have to. That's that's drugs. that's one of the things where you have to like take account for. So you have control over like what, as I said earlier, like you shouldn't think something you don't have control over. So if you're upgrading your version of Android, let's say uh, your company wants you to upgrade to Android seven point one point three or something, you're gonna have to rebase, also rebase the overlay as well because they're both like linked together. Jeff. You said that in um, Android, so now if you want to run a theme now, you have to have like a custom ROM or root. Right. And you can use Substratum, your uh, you know, platform, to make that happen. And mm -hmm. then you said in Android, oh, it's all going to be available to be done without root. So right. someone that's new to themes, or even like for your project, does that mean like, you know, now it's, it, there's like a pretty high barrier of entry to theme it. You right. root your device or run a ROM, but, you know, come Android, oh, does that mean like everyone's going to be going to the substratum and, and trying to install themes on their phones? Or do you think that because of the fragmentation with like Pixel versus Samsung versus LG, like it's not really going to change, it's just going to give more options for kind of stock users? I guess you can say it gives more options for stock users, but um, let's say come Android O, um, if they, if they, if, if let's say like Samsung retains that code and doesn't really utilize it, or like modifies it so that only system apps can like install. You can assume that like third party apps such as Substrata or like you know all these like forks of them can actually run run it without uh, root because if you grant it an extra permission at the start, you can um, you can actually just do it without root and just simulate the shell commands directly on the device. Right. So uh, so sorry. Follow up with that. Um, so uh, does that mean that, do you think that like Sam, so that just basically means that uh, for stock Android, uh, anyone can theme their phone, um, but do you think that Samsung might start adding restrictions to allow only their theme engine, like once kind of anybody can do it? Right, so obviously we, we kind of like took over the Samsung theming because uh, we, we I, as I said earlier, we have like a Samsung RO version. Yeah. Um, obviously I, I'm pretty sure they're going to, uh, you know, of protections for it, so that only applications signed by you know the original signer of the target application. So let's say if I signed Hangouts, only I can sign the overlay that can apply to it. So um, you know that's that's something to be aware of. But like currently, like we can assume that Nexus devices or Pixel devices would have like the the just you can use the shell and just like enable any overlay that's installed into the device. 